My talk at the symposium was on using humour to communicate information about conservation and the natural world. Uh, I think humour is a really underutilised form of communication, especially in the environmental sciences. So often in conservation we're discussing really negative news, it can make people feel quite sad, quite hopeless, and humour is a really good way of transferring that information but in a way that makes people feel more positive about it. Um, and this has been discussed for other fields, so I wanted to persuade people that conservation has much more scope for humour. Yeah, so I started um, with someone that I'd interacted with on Twitter. We started a hashtag, which was Does It Fart? Um, this was really popular. We t it, initially, we turned it into a spreadsheet, and that was crowdsourced from lots of different scientists on Twitter and pet owners and zookeepers. Uh, and basically, it was a list of animals and whether they farted or not. Um, this really took off with teachers, and teachers were using it in the classroom to teach kids about the animal world. Um, and also it was picked up by the media, so I did quite a lot of media interviews about it at the time. Um, it was featured on things like the Washington Post, it was featured in the Times, um, and I even went on TV, on Canadian TV, to discuss animal farts. Um, and in the midst of all that, our publisher said, hey, do you want to do you want to turn this into a book? So we kind of took the opportunity um, to discuss things on the, the topic of farts, but also to add lots of information about the natural world and about animals, and even about their conservation status. So when people come, they find the book funny. It's really humorous because it's dry scientists talking about, in a scientific language, and but actually the topic is farts. And it's really gone down well. Um, we've sold over 50,000 copies globally. Um, it's now being translated into 10 other languages other than English and we became New York Times bestsellers as of last month and it's just been fantastic. The feedback of how kids have loved it and adults have loved it and they just say that they've learned so much and they were surprised by how much they learned. So I think it's a really good example of reaching people with something that seems very light-hearted but actually they're learning a lot in the process. I think for me it's about, it's always going to have to be what you also find funny and just kind of test the waters. If you have any sort of platform, you can kind of see what people find funny, what people don't find funny. But I also think there's an element of luck. You can't super predict what people are going to pick up on, what the media is going to pick up on. So I think it's just a case of trial and error and just... For me, I find if it's humorous to me, it's often surprisingly humorous to other people. What kind of started off as a bit of, I might say, like an in-joke among scientists, actually spiraled into something where there was broader public interest. So I think it's just about being a scientist, being out there, being in the public sphere. And if you do like humor, then don't worry about incorporating that into your science communication because I think it makes it go so much further. Yeah, so there's numerous comedy clubs around the country these days that um, do science communication through comedy, things like Bright Club. In London we have a programme uh, called Animal Show Off, it happens at the Grant Museum, uh, and that's animal researchers talking about their work. It's really, I think people learn a lot along the way um, from scientists doing stand-up, and I think it's also a really good way of showing people, oh, scientists aren't just the old men in white coats. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that's another example of where Hume has been really successful. Um, and then also a lot of popular scientists, uh, science articles these days are moving in that direction. Sites like BuzzFeed, Gizmodo, it's more of a light-hearted touch um, for their science articles, but they're actually really well re researched. Um, so I would also say that those kind of websites are really good for that sort of thing. Yeah, the talk went really well. I was really pleased with the feedback. People were saying they felt really inspired. I think we really succeeded on our aim of showing people whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever you're interested in and however you like to communicate, then there's a place for you in science communication. And I also think it kind of encouraged people to think a little bit outside the box, maybe to try new things. So I really hope people will go on and take that on board. Uh, being in Finland has been amazing. I, living in London, I don't get a chance to get out into green space very often. To be able to do that every day here has been fantastic. I've seen loads of really awesome animals, which I guess Finnish people would probably laugh at me for finding them exciting, but all of the red squirrels and the grebes and the woodpeckers, and it's just been amazing to just see them here, like a short walk from where I'm staying. And it's just really refreshed me. I'm really ready to go back to research now. It's, it's given me a lot of ideas.